I'm a South Sudanese refugee. I have been here about 16 years. I am a refugee from Gambela, Ethiopia. It has been like 14 years now in Kenya since I left my country. I am a content generator for the Sikika radio program. I'm a content generator. I do field interview. I do a research on the topic to be covered. I collect a story from the community and then I research and I also produce from uh, there I edit and also I do reporting. So I'm also a reporter and also an editor. Okay. What drives me to be to participate in Sikika program is I wanted to work closely to the community. I felt like the, the voice of the refugee and the host community around here is not hard, is not there. So I felt like, you know, I have that responsibility. I should take that responsibility to be a voice of the people, of the refugee and those communities that are living in Kakuma and Kalobi. You know, when you work together to closely to the community, there's a, a lot of stories. I wanted to be that voice telling their stories to the community or to the society or to the whole world. So it is like through me, their voice is going to be heard because I'm going to tell their story. Uh, continuing or uh, delivering the services uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic while other organizations suspended their activity is a very, very, very big decision that we made as a content generator. What, what motivates us to do that is that, you know, uh, the, the, inform the information that we are delivering is a crucial information that is life-saving information. We felt like we could not, we could not just sit there and relax. So we should do something. If we could have relaxed and also suspend this program and sit there, and all those very important information that we have been uh, fasting, we have been giving out to the community would have not been there. And the, the community would have not known the intels of the COVID-19, the effect and also some of the important things that they need to know. How, how did we, uh, we continue? Uh, before COVID-19, we had a total of 12 and we usually work as 12 in number. Because we are 12, we, are, we divided ourselves into, 12, into three groups. Some members will come on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then the other two days will reserve for editorial meeting. Before we go to the office, we wash our hands twice in the main gates and also in our gate office. When your hand dry, you need to sanitize again when you reach inside the office, the room. And in our office, we have three tables. And therefore, they have uh, located one table for each person to avoid overcrowding in the office. Then the, the, other, the other person now will be set at the corner. Plus now the, the person who will be there, maybe the, our, our uh, content development uh, coordinator uh, to be with us there. So we are going to be five and we make sure that we are wearing our face mask every day and everywhere we are. So that is how we cope with uh, COVID-19. So maybe we can start with gender mainstreaming. We have several topics, but to, to come up with a topic, we have to brainstorm, we have to debate. And then through our debate and uh, brainstorming, that is when now we see the most important topic that we wanted to tackle or we wanted to put into the program of maybe this month, like if we are talking about this month, then that is how now we selected the topic. We have our listeners group who are now uh, the the consumers of the content together with the community members and from there now where we we get our feedback we get our, our feedback from them due to covid 19 situation now uh, we like we the the products or the production we produce 
we uh, send them through WhatsApp group to avoid to avoid contact because when we like when we call them the uh, the listeners group we are many and that one will not be inconvenient because of COVID-19. So we have this WhatsApp group where they posted uh, what have been the community have been saying. We include we in, incorporate all those uh, ideas, all those feedback from listeners group, from community members, from the leaders, and from the youth uh, groups, and then that will now guide us to the next program. Those feedback from the community is very important. That why now we are growing and we are going ahead with the production. The program is not only uh, the target is the, the the target is now the community. And in the community, we have women, we have children, we have youth, we have elderly women and elderly men, and then also we have persons with disability. So those are incorporated, and we make sure that when we do a program, we include all those voices. The skill that I achieve through Sikika, it can be helpful in the society or it will help me in the future. Because when I go back to my community or to my country, I'll use that knowledge that I have acquired through Sikika program to be a news reporter and to tell the story of, of other people to the whole world. Thank you.